Hi, welcome to my channel. Today I am going to make an old Hollywood um, junk journal. You can see I've got a signature I've put together and I have some envelopes, pockets and tags. They're not fully completed. Um, it's just some bits and pieces to get me started. So, primarily everything has came from packaging and old books. Um, I sell second-hand books on eBay, so a lot of the big coffee table books, they don't hold any value and they sell for less than it would cost to post them. So a lot of those books I keep for myself and they just provide so much um, good stuff for these junk journals. So this is Audrey Hepburn. Um, this is basically a double page. When I take the pages out of the books, I try and keep the keep them intact so that I have double pages. Um, so Hollywood glamour, nothing says it more than Audrey Hepburn. Um, so I just think that's a great way to start off the journal. There wasn't, I would normally put a bit of scrap paper, um, scrapbook paper, um, but I didn't really have any that filled the glamour um, brief. So um, there she is again. I'm not even sure that I'm going to put anything in these two pages because I just think they speak for themselves. This is, I try and um, make my page, my normal papers look distressed and aged by setting up a tray of water with um, a few drops of acrylic inks, dark, dark umber and a splash of yellow. And I crease the papers before I put them in as well. Um, I just like that look. <laughs> I like it when it collects all in the creases. Looks like somebody's just spilt their coffee all over it. Um, this is another page out of the book, just a single page. So, um, Hollywood Boulevard, old traffic lights, I mean, it just looks fabulous. Um, this is a scene from a movie. Oh, I'm not sure which scene um, or which movie. Um, I have um, a page from one of my map books. This map book is from the 70s, I'm sure. And we can see Hollywood right there. Hence why I chose this page. <laughs> Um, this is Gin no what from wrong? I think this is Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire. <laughs> um so what I've done is just because it was hanging out of this um the cover, I just folded Fred over, um, kept ginger and I've made Fred into a pocket. We also have um some very old-fashioned tights with the line that goes up the back and um, so this must be from a musical um called the bandwagon no i've not heard of that one anyway so that in itself i just think is so glamorous i love the shades the colors this is a music page i actually was had the double page and i was going to um keep it as a double but it was just far too large and I didn't want to do much more folds because I'd got so many pockets already. I couldn't find a song that was like a Hollywood musical, unfortunately. So this doesn't quite tie in. But a music sheet is nice in your um, junk journal. Now, this is some beautiful ladies with Marilyn Monroe, I'm pretty sure. And this is Lauren Bacall. So... Um, it's quite a modern one this actually but that um, it still really fits in really well that's just the other side of the map unfortunately it doesn't say Hollywood <laughs> this is just the contents page this picture was from Ginger Rogers so what I have done is I've actually there was a full picture of a director and just thought oh that's a brilliant picture the old old style film camera so I'm actually just going to use the matte medium to paste this directly onto here and this is the Hollywood traffic lights so this is quite a famous picture actually of the ladies on the bicycles I've seen this a few times before so 
Um, this doesn't cover it too much at the end. It just just covers the wheels a bit, so you can still see the old car. It's just the other side of the acrylic ink um, stained paper, and this is Audrey's legs. <laughs> we will put something up here. Uh, and I will put something on the back just because it's quite it's quite modern um, this page but I will try and keep a lot of that yellow I think because that's just beautiful. A lot of the colours in these old books as well are just really vibrant. So I've also made a lot of um, bits and bobs <laughs> to go in it. So this is all made with pages out of the book and some dog food packaging and a um, thank you card that I had found in one of the books. Um, so this is the thank you card. I do like the shade of blue that's here, which is why I chose it. I also think it's it bring there's kind of blue tones in this black and white photo out of the book, and I um, I think it really brings them to life. These are two of my jelly plate prints on the side and I have a journaling spot on the back and now I still need to put um, the paper on. I might do that just now actually <laughs> while we're talking. Oh the signature as well, I've just bound the signature um, with a bow. I've did five holes, now I'm not an expert in any shape or form um, so I just like the strings hanging out of the sides. I used um, waxed thread for it. Um, it is an actual book binding kit that I got on Amazon for about £9. And it came with the awl that you make the holes with. And the, um, you know, the needles as well to put the threads through. And it came with about nine different colours of thread that... I think it is designed for shoes actually, but they're just beautiful colours. That's the most vibrant colour that's in amongst it. The rest of them are like burgundies, grey, dark brown, etc. So I'm just putting my matte medium on. I like this because it is archival. It doesn't warp the papers too much, which obviously doesn't matter with this one, but some of the papers you want to keep a bit nicer. Um, there we go. And this is my bone folder. It is um, very dirty. It's just a mixture of glue, inks, paints, um, and it will peel off. You can see I'm starting to peel it off at the top there. I bought this. Um, it was either £1.50 or £2 from The Range, which is my favourite go-to shop for this, for all my bits and pieces. Um, I had... You got the two of them, and... It, and you can use other um, things like the ruler or the back of a spoon or something. But what's good about this is there's not any sharp edges. So your paper's less likely to rip. Um, there we go. I'll punch some holes in these. I'll do that after though. Um, it's gorgeous. Seen from a musical. I'm really showing my ignorance here that I don't know what the musical is. Um... So this was a, pe a page out of a book as well. It began life a lot larger. I made an envelope. However, I tried to get really fancy doing fancy things to it and it just got smaller and smaller. So now we have really just a pocket left from it. Um, I don't mind if this side gets stuck down because I think all the, there's enough interest on this side and I'm not losing too much. Um, but this is old magazines, um, old movie magazines, three and a half pennies they cost when they came out. This is just a little pocket. Um, it's just, you know, the sort of behind the scenes of a movie. I have cut the top with, um, these are children's scissors. I use these um, for some fancy shaping. I I'm going to get a circle punch and... There's a couple of shapes of the scissors that I use quite a lot. Um, and so what I will try and purchase a better version of them, but I just wanted to sort of trial and error them first. This is Marlene Dietrich. And Dietrich, oh, I can't say that properly. That's terrible. Um, so 
this was supposed to be an envelope however she is also on the back and how can you choose between each of these pictures so all I've done is rounded the corners um, using my pinch and what I'm going I've just folded it in three and I'm just going to put it behind a little tuck spot because this this is just beautiful and it's actually it's because it's these glossy coffee table books it's got a lot of strength to it so we don't want to do anything more to that this is a little collage tag that I've made now because I have put a few layers on it and it started life as the it's a sort of thin corrugated cardboard but it is quite it's quite a stiff cardboard it's quite thick I can't round the corners because it won't fit in um, however, um, I do think it's lovely and that is a feature for the for the journal. So this is a scene from a musical. Now, this is awful. I don't know whether it's Gene Kelly, Fred Astaire or even someone else, but I love the movements that the ladies are making. And um, this is also a sort of behind the scenes shooting of a movie. This is jelly plate prints I've used. There's three different ones here. Um, I just wanted to add a bit of... I just feel that all these pictures are quite a sort of dark gothic feel to them. And I wanted to um, you know, go a wee bit over the top with the embellishments of it. And also this is a very... Ended up a very bright gold. And so it needed more to counteract that... Um, on the back now i think this is bronze gold and dark umber it does look like there's been some leftover yellows and this i've just kind of wiped a, a credit card or something along the jelly plate to make these lines this is just square paper and um, with i think it's bronze and maybe some yellow and orange hints in there and again i am going to put a journaling spot on the back of that as well this one I love this one this is um this was cut out one of those books and it's just um advertising I think it's filmmakers advertising themselves or advertising maybe their equipment or something I've backed it with this is the dog food box I've backed it with um jelly print and at the front as well um another jelly print and at the back I've done this print on paper that had already been drawn on that's a lot of felt pen there so when I put the journaling spot on this one I am going to have it more covered in this area so because I really like that and I'm going to keep that exposed and um, this is Marlene Dietrich no it's not apologies it's Joan Crawford and it says it right there. Um, I love this. This paper itself is quite strong actually. It's, it, it is like scrapbook paper. Um, you know, the thickness wise. Um, I love her facial expression. And so the whole envelope was made around this image right here. To make it the star of the show. Now this envelope I have... This is like a film poster. I'm not sure. The 99. Not sure. Don't know that movie. But what I've done is I've used brown ink around the sides. Um, however, I don't think it works so well. So I am going to go back over that with some silver and gesso to try and counteract it a wee bit. And give an older distressed look. But one that matches in with the black and white. Um, that's just a little closure I've put on here and this has just been cut with the children's scissors um, so this was a page out of one of the books and you know it was quite nice with the film roll edges and it's just lots of scenes from movies now I want to say is this Ben-Hur I think that's Ben-Hur I could be wrong but I think it is anyway I'm, off. I'm going off on a tangent <laughs> um, and I've cut that as well with the scissors. I've just doubled that wee flap down here at the top just to make it a little bit more 
um, sturdy and I'll probably be keeping this one closed because I haven't cut these edges very well. Um, I still got to, you know, put the finishing touches in a lot of these, but I thought I could do that on camera. This one is completely finished. I have used some gesso and some silver paint around the outsides and just lightly in places just to add a little bit of shimmer. So to me that does look aged, but it still has that sort of luxurious feel to it. Um, so just cut out one of the books. I mean, these books sell for like three to five pound on eBay because a lot of the big sellers have reduced postage costs um, just because of like the couriers. They have like their own, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Contracts, you know, their own um, deals with, with their own courier companies. Anyway, I'm off on a tangent again. So, um... I've cut that out of there. This is actually one of the pages out of the book as well. It's just a background that I've cut off something and I just think it looks great. This is a very faded still from a movie and this is the thank you card again. So it's got that nice elegant muted blue. And on the back, this is just silver and I think that could be black um, jelly print. Now again, I've put a book page in the back and I've inked it up and, and I just feel that the brown ink doesn't go quite as well with um, the mostly black and white images that we're using. So I'm trying this method. I might just do a mixture. At the end of the day, it's more about the process anyway, isn't it? So I had one more tag that I wanted to make. So I thought I'll just do that quickly to give it a chance to dry. Um, before we continue so getting out the trusted matte medium um, I just use this in everything it's just um, I don't sew I don't know how to sew and also I don't have the storage space for a sewing machine to store it in such a way that it's ready to use all the time um, I've got so much art stuff because I do a lot of paintings as well it's not just the, the junk journals and obviously with running the bookshop as well I, you know a lot of space is taken up with um, packaging materials and stuff so the sewing machine is on hold just now so first of all I am trying to work out how do I want this one I think I want it I do like the the design. I'm not sure. I th that could be a flag or something. Um, now, I'm going to have it slightly lower. I've already looked into this. I'm going to have it down a little bit lower at the bottom. So, um, just need to rip this bit off. Keep all my scraps as well. That one's in that borderline category of, oh, it could still be used. That wee edge could be nice. But this one probably is just a little bit too small to keep. Right, just smooth that out. A little bit more here. And, oops, got this one here for the bottom. Might need to use a wee bit more of this one actually. Because it's ever so slightly not enough. There we go. That was perfect. I'm just going to just put a little bit more in here. The only thing with the matte medium is it does leave marks on the the black and white, the glossy page images. However, I don't mind that. I just think it adds to the kind of old old look of it. Um, so 
A Star is Born with Judy Garland. Um, she does really look like Liza Minnelli there, or Liza Minnelli really looks like her there, seeing as she's the mum. Um, I always feel like I'm buttering sandwiches with this. I'm like an expert bread butterer. <laughs> um, I mean, these books are so good to buy. Um, you know, to buy a lot of the kits to make this stuff, they would be so expensive, and yet they, you know, they're all here. Just, oh, I was going to put it a little bit further down, actually. I need to find the edge. Because they do want to keep the whole photograph on. There we go. I found it. And look at that. Oh, I love it. So, let's just get the scissors. I watch a lot of other people's videos and their equipment is so clean. Their desks are so clean. Their hands are so clean. <laughs> And then I come along and it's, um, oh, do you know, I have tried to do it with, like, trying to keep everything clean, but I, I, I see this as something that I enjoy, and so I avoid doing things that feel like work, and, uh, you know, like, measuring Unless I really had to, I really probably wouldn't bother measuring. And if I did have to measure, um, like I watch scrapbooking with me and the lady on that. No, I think her name is Eve, although it could be E. Um, she she did show me. I watched her for the envelopes, and I did do the whole ruler from corner to corner and looked at the middle number. Just for making the envelope, but I didn't do any other measuring on it. <laughs> that was quite enough. Yeah. That isn't that lovely. But I think this will be the feature, actually, of the junk journal. Um, and so on the back, we need to find a worthy piece, a worthy jelly print. And I've had my eye on this one. I know it's not black and white. However, it's it's got a lovely watery effect. And that is gold and it's pearlescent paint that's on it. But I love it. So I'm thinking I'm going to use that. I'm actually going to cut it a bit. Oh, this hurts. <laughs> because what I would like to try and do is... Do you know what? I think it just fits. By the time I've inked up the edges anyway, it will. And then have something running through the middle. Um, I've got so many of these. Oh, that's lovely with the... Is it too much? Is it too much? Oh. This is a terrible decision to make. Oh, what about this one? Do you know, I love this one with it, but I think, see, because blue... And orange are complementary colours. I do think I'm going to choose this one. I think that's the hardest decision I've made all day. Oh, what lovely jelly print will I use? I, I, I do, I do, I absolutely love um, making jelly print. There's so much interest in them. And see, because they're one of a kind as well you know you won't find it in somebody else's journal only yours so and the jelly plate is i mean there is a bit of an investment there because i think the jelly plate is about 10 pound from amazon i paid and the brayers were six or seven i, I got kind of medium and a small and they were just very basic ones and um, but they do the job and then there's the paints. Um, I mean, on the jelly plate, I find that it, the quality of the paint doesn't really matter. It's more about what you're doing with them and the kind of shapes that you're creating with them. 
I'm just going to sit there as a bit of a guide just now. Um, I think that's definitely what's more important. It, because if you were just doing flat colours and it was all about the spread of the colour, you would just be doing it directly onto the page. That's my theory. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm going to stick this one down. This is going to have a slight white edge into it, but this is a necessary evil. Um, what was I saying? Jelly plates. Yeah, and so really you could you could you could um, just buy the, um, the the children's paints from B and M or you know another really cheap shop and use them, and then decide what you're wanting from there. Um, how do I want to do this one? I quite like that big white bit actually. There we go. Right, I think that'll cover it. Oh, lovely. Yes, it will. So really for about £20, maybe 25 tops, you could be set up to be doing loads of jelly prints. And I use old um, old drawings, old paintings that I've done. I use book pages. I use packaging. I do a lot of jelly printing on the brown paper that comes from packaging. Um, there we go. Um, tissue paper as well. I like to do it on tissue paper because then you can layer. So you can have it over images. I'm a bit of an enthusiast for jelly plate printing, I will say. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed. Anyway. I'm an enthusiast for jelly plate printing using images from books and matte medium. <laughs> So I'm just going to cut around the edges. Let's see if I can out a wee bit. Matte medium dries clear. And I mean, you could use other glues. And obviously, if you can sew, you can do the sewing as well. I'll be keeping that little bit of gold paper. Oh, it's got a little bit of orange in the back. I've got it all over the place. I'm terrible for remembering to put something down to glue on. I think because when you're junk journaling, you do do that much gluing. You just forget. Okay, that is kind of almost like a hologram effect. And it's just the gold has been put on. I think that's actually oil pastel that's on top of. I love oil pastels as well. You know, you can actually do, you know, I'll... You can use oil pastels to do all your kind of distressed edging as well. Um, you just want to kind of make sure that you cover them up a bit. Um, I'm terrible for using my hands and I really should use a paintbrush. To put this on the edges, but I like to seal the edges. Because it, um, because it doesn't get sewed, it's just an extra protection measure. There we go. The other thing about matte medium as well is if you end, you can actually smooth it down as well if you, I mean I've never found it gets too bumpy on here but if you did you can actually just take sandpaper to it and do it as well just to smooth it down a bit. Obviously when it's dry not when it's wet. There we go. Oh, so I'm just going to smooth it all. This is why my bone folder is a this colour. I get more glue on it than other stuff sometimes. I love this. Do you know, I'm not even going to put a journaling spot in the back of this because that is pale enough to write on itself and it's stunning. I might put a little bit 
have something on here though um you know a wee bit of silver paint or something that's gorgeous anyway we will put that to the side just there because it needs to dry before we do anything else to it so we're going to start on this page so for this page um i'm going to put some embellishments on it so i want to put this on and oh i hate it because i'm destroying both these wonderful pictures however we're prioritizing the hollywood junk journal and i know that says hollywood back to leg theory but yeah it's not really about hollywood i have this um cinema advertisement of a movie that i'm going to use Again, this is one of these re reproduction books that contains a lot of old adverts in Bygone Britain, this one was called. Bygone Britain at Play, I think this one was called. Um, I've not put that very straight at all. Never mind. That will do. And I like this one. I like the big frame. And I like the um, picture of the old camera on it. So this is 1920 to 1930. It's very thin paper though, so you wouldn't want to use this. It's almost like newspaper thickness. See the way that just tore there? Um, do you know, I might get out the old paper trimmer. Just because this is quite a big one. Um, I do like this for bigger um, bigger items but this is something that I've only gotten recently it, you know it's one of those things that are not essential they're more their kind of add-ons as time goes by now and I'm sure I got I'm sure I got this on Amazon actually for about £10 which considering that it has a blade on it that's going to need to be replaced at some point but probably that replacement will involve buying a new paper trimmer um, it's not the best oh I think we'll put that this way and you know might put oh Audrey you're getting covered up a bit we'll need to we'll need to trim it perfect there we go so i am um, i am going to use the ink on these bits of paper because they're not really sturdy enough to be getting all the paint onto but i also need to invest in a blending tool i haven't um, done that yet i haven't I haven't got one of these blending tools they all use Should they do a much better of it, job of it as well with the blending tool than I do? It's probably the reason why they have clean hands actually. So it is. There must have something that I can use in place of a blending tool. There we go. I don't want to use too much on this just because um, it doesn't fit in with Audrey so well. There we go. Okay. I don't know why I bother putting the lid back in that either. There we go. these lovely ladies so this is 20s to 30s fashion they do have that kind of flapper girl waist I might just go around the edges of this one actually
got resistor in the middle. I kind of want to glue it all here. Yeah, that way. There we go. Right. There we go. You know, I still actually have most of my ladies left. This is just a cheap book as well. Um, two or three pound on eBay, you'll get that one for. an amazing open page do you know that opening page right i think we're going to need to put um something on this page this is what i was looking for that's wonderful little pocket. I am going to attempt to do a wee semicircle to make it look like it. I mean it's no it's definitely not bad compared to a lot of my my normal attempts. Definitely a circle punch is definitely, I think it's top of the list of things to buy. <laughs> Eyelets as well is another thing, but all these things are really expensive and they add up. And you think of something like a punch, you don't think of that being that expensive, but you're probably looking at at least £10 plus for something like that, so... That is quite a bit of money. So I'm just going to use the bone folder just to stick it down. I didn't ink that up because I didn't really feel it needed it. Um, oh, what one are we going to use? We still need to dry. Oh, fortunately that one's too big for it. We still need to dry that one as well. I think we will go for this one. Now I do need to add a little bit of um, gesso and silver paint to this one. So now gesso is about I'm sure that was nine or ten pound. Could have been more um, to buy, but it lasts such a long time because you only need the tiniest part of it. Um, but again, you could just use white paint for this as well just be sparing <laughs> so I kind of try and I, I like to use them separately um, for this I'm resisting using my fingers even though I know that I'm just about to I will do, I will just do one of these, I'll do the rest off camera. Do you know, I wonder how one of the blending tools would be with this actually. It's just so much easier to do it with your fingers. But at the end of the day, it's not good to have chemicals in your fingers um, that aren't designed to be there. I'll start off you know quite delicately with it and then you're like oh I can do more but that I always find do a bit more in the corners 
because that's more naturally where it would occur. It's just kind of L-shaped with it. Mm. So I just did a wee bit too much there. I think that's enough of that there. And now we'll tie a little bit of the silver on it as well. Kind of rolling it on. I don't want it to look too even though. A lot of people use silver pens and you know to go around the edges and that does look really lovely but I just want it. I want it to have an aged effect, an aged look to it. There we go. It's a bit more time consuming than using the inks. I wonder if that, there's probably an equivalent ink colour you can buy actually. Um, but I don't know what it is. There we go. Just a wee bit more there. And I think that's really lovely. And you know it is practically dry already. Of course I've got all my hands all over the back of it, haven't I? Uh, a little bit of fine grit sandpaper actually. I'll just, just because it's a bit thick, so I just want to disperse it a wee bit. There we go. That's it. There you go. It just broke it up a wee bit just to make it that bit more. See, now I'm on a roll, shouldn't have started this. There we go. Perfect. Oh, love that. Okay. I need to put this out to the side to dry. So. Oh, that fits in there perfectly. Well, when I do get my circle punch, I will go back over this. I am going to um, just leave it sitting out just now, though, just because let it ensure it's dry first. Now, I do love this, and I want to keep, I suppose, this kind of top half of it. So I'll choose something to put down here. Um, we'll put Marlene down here. Oh, I think that's perfect. Yes, Marlene. I think that um, I will give her a wee bit of the gesso and silver treatment. But I'm going to do it off camera because uh, it's very time consuming. Here we go. Do you know what? I'm not sure it was possible to make that picture look more gothic, but I think I've achieved it. It is a shape to cover up this lovely dress. However, um, I'd have kept it in the book if I was if I was going wanting to use it that way. There we go. Oh, it couldn't have been more of a perfect size. Side. Stuck that bit down. I just like, I like it to be a bit tactile. Now, I don't think these gentlemen need maybe ever so slightly round the edge there. I wouldn't want to do too much more than that to it because the jelly prints are has got a lot of um what's the word I'm looking for? Um, distressed 
they're already quite distressed looking. Um, I was going to put a journaling spot on the back of this. Just give me a minute. I like the corners to have a more rounded look to them as much as possible. We're going for this side. Oh, where are we going for that side? I think we're there. There we go. That does the job thing. You can use that. Despite saying I'm not going to use the ink, I am going to use the ink. But sparingly. Also, I've noticed nobody else looks like they're working in this tiny little space of chaos. Maybe that'll come with time. That ability to look capable. Oh, that is perfect. Right, I wish I hadn't got sandpaper right now. I want to sand everything. I'm doing this um, painting just now and it's on wooden panel and it's honestly the, the amount of sanding I've done on it. But I just love, I love putting it on and then taking it away. Anyway, gorgeous. So that will sit in here. Ah, oh, that's perfect. Do you know, love that. Although what we do need to do is actually I need to punch a hole in the top. I'm going to put it in the corner of that one and in the top of this one. This is so sturdy. So I'm, I'm going to give these a try because they're black and it might add a bit of glamour there. You know, like almost, oh, what are they called? Zip ties that they put around packaging. If you're getting a fairly heavy parcel. Now I'm going to put it about here. This is just part of that book binding kit. There we go. Now I need to make sure it's big enough for the this to go through. I will need to make it a bit bigger, I think. You want to take your time pushing through with that because it um you want to keep the, the hole itself sturdy enough. There we go. Not sure this is a knot tying. I'm not sure that I'll be able to use this actually. Which is a shame. No, I think this might be navy blue rather. Oh no, it is black. The thread. I might use some of the blue with it actually. That's a shame. I will find another use for these. I literally keep everything, it's terrible. Right. I like to do lots of different knots, but um this one's to be elegant, so Going to create one loop with it though. Right, this is the tricky part. 
where you want to create that knot but you want to keep a bit of a loop as well testing your hand grip strength here ah there we've got and i'm just going to cut off the excess there we go lovely there. Now for the ladies, I'm going to do it because I want this to sit horizontally, so I am now eyelets a lot to make the hole more secure. Then people use eyelets. However, the this card is flimsier, this thank you card. I'm going to get out the cutting board just to lean on. Safety first. Right. Yeah, because it'll keep the hole, the hole from becoming like frayed and torn. But I don't know how to do that yet and I don't have the kit for it and the kits look quite expensive and while there are ones for under £10, when you read the reviews, I think it's one of those tools that you maybe, you need to buy a sort of tried and tested one because um, there is a bit of pressure involved and I suppose it's to do with accuracy of the hole size in the eyelet, so... What am I going to use for the ladies? Right, I've got, so there's some green in here. No, I did have a nice green ribbon, actually. I'll have a look. I found this. So this is like a, a seam binding um, for like blinds or curtains. Um, this is, well, it says it's PVA glue. It says you can use it for fabrics, so I am just going to glue the edges of this together just to create a neater finish, basically. I'm sure you could probably use the matte medium on it, to be fair, because that is... Well, that says PVA, and it's non-toxic. I imagine that that is similar to the matte medium. It just doesn't come with a giant tub. There we go. Oh, do you know what would have been good for that? The invisible thread that you iron, no, the invisible, yeah, the invisible mend. The iron on to close. I'm trying to make it all tidy and then I'm squeezing it through the hole. There. Oh, that's lovely. I do want it to be more forward though. I've actually got prop. I wonder if no, they won't cut through it. I've got sharper scissors. Somewhere. Oh, they were lovely to cut with. Okay. I also have do you know I need to put them away because if not they'll get covered in glue as well. There we go. Oh, how nice is that? They're almost meant to be. 